is another refried scenes. Hello. How are you doing today, Carol? It's Halloween time. I'm happy. <laughs> this is like <laughs> this is the month like by by like October 31st you're going to revert to looking like 29 again. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> you've just been imbibed with the yeah, spirit of the Halloween. The spirit of Halloween has infused me. Now, when do you start watching The Nightmare Before Christmas? Um, usually a Halloween, and then I'll watch it throughout the, the whole holiday season. Because I consider it both a Halloween and a Christmas movie. Mm, okay, so it's pulling double duties. Yeah. All right. Then, but then enough. I watch it all year as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> you do not discriminate when it comes to No, I don't. I love that movie. It's right. such a fun movie. It is. You know, it we is. got a weird synergy going on here the last few weeks because I just I just realized that this morning we did the Friday the 13th reboot, mm-hmm. which was directed by Marcus Nispel. Mm-hmm. Then we did Texas Chainsaw, original by Toby Hooper. Reboot by Marcus Nispel. Oh, really? I didn't realize. Yeah. And then <laughs> we're now doing Poltergeist, which the original was Toby directed Hooper. by Toby Hooper. Yeah. <laughs> so we we have, we're giving Toby Hooper the love he never got we, anywhere else. And Marcus Nispel and for Marcus some Nispel. bizarre reason. <laughs> he just, someone's talking about me on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> My name is out there. We're so yes. get him on the show one of these days. Poltergeist. Yes, we're talking Poltergeist. This is the second week of our, our month of horror. Yes. Reboots and remakes and all that kind of good stuff. And we're talking some poltergeist. Or I like to call it the step-by-step guide of what not to do when somebody <laughs> haunts your place. Well, first, you need to put the pot down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, well I mean, to be fair, like they were smoking before shit got wild. That's true. <laughs> if, if, if it were me, that's when I would have started smoking. Like, I need a maybe, coping maybe it mechanism. helps. Maybe it helps. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I just got to clear my mind real quick. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I can handle the. I can handle the clown doll now. Yeah. <laughs> or just offer the polter guy a little just something. Like, come on. I'm still surprised Jason didn't take the maker's mark in the, I, I don't know, man. <laughs> in the it's, reboot. It's, yeah, him and him and maybe that's. Oh my God, Marcus Nispel. There is a platinum Duneverse. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> platinum he, Duneverse. He, he did the whole. Because <laughs> he's meshing those Texas Chainsaw Friday the Thirteenth. Oh, oh. Man. okay. So Poltergeist, directed by Seekers Toby Hooper in 1982. Right, air quotes. Yeah. <laughs> I have to give it to him. Steven Spielberg gives it to him. But I am going to say, having rewatched this, Steven Spielberg's hands are all over all this thing. over this joint, man. <laughs> I did not know that this was actually originally, in Spielberg's mind, a uh, sequel to Close Encounters of the Third Kind. What? In a- what way <laughs> are, are mean-ass spirits connected with like aliens? Just well, come originally the script had aliens. Okay. And then Toby Hooper got involved and said, maybe we, I don't do aliens well. Can we do ghosts? <laughs> okay, Toby. Why so they, they, they switched it to, to, to ghosts. What did that, uh, Spielberg had what? What came out in 82? That um, well, he was e. working T? on E.T. while this was being filmed. Okay. E.T. was 81, All right, I then. believe. So, um, yeah, he was working on E.T. He wrote this. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's just pulling some double duty. Yeah, and from what I hear, he was on the set quite a bit. Mm, just you know, checking things checking out, checking things out, you know, making some suggestions. Uh, who made the who who who? Do you know who released this movie? Off the top of your head, was it um, I believe or it or is. Is it the same people at AT? Was Spielberg able to just run back and forth between his editing bay <laughs> <laughs> and the filming of this movie? Gosh, uh, no, it's MGM. That's right. Yeah. The lion was at the beginning of this movie. Uh, so yeah, this was MGM. Um, that's right, because later on in the original, the MGM line sound effect, you can hear it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, so. yeah, Toby Hooper, uh, starring Coach. Coach, yes, or or Mr. Incredible. Or, or yeah, or, yeah, Mr. Before Incredible. Before he went crazy. Or Mr. Fantastic. Yeah, Craig T. Nelson is kind of insane right now. Is he really? Yeah. Hardcore conservative. No, no, not coach. Oh, no, I know. He gave me so much life advice growing up. Yes. Uh, Joe Beth Williams. Joe Beth Williams, yeah. And, and of course. And then the late Heather O'Rourke. Yeah, yeah. And the late Dominique Dune. There's a lot of lates. There's a lot of lates in the children <laughs> yeah. of this cast. <laughs> Coming around here. Oh, the curse got him. Yeah. Um, do you remember the first time you watched this movie? I saw it in the theater. Okay. Um, I'm, I snuck it. I think this was actually PG. So this was one of the movies that created the PG-13 rating. Okay. Because it was PG when it was released. and they Because they didn't feel it was quite an R. Mm-hmm. But this one and Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, they another like, Spielberg Whoa. joint. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they Spielberg were like, we need something in between. We need, yeah. we need something. Yeah. Um, so this was PG. Um, so yeah, I went and saw it in the theater. Okay. All right. Um, and I actually, I love this film. I hadn't seen it in years and years. <laughs> so when I sat down and watched it, I was like, oh, my God, I like this family. Yeah, I like. The, I really like that. It's got a great 
family dynamic. So yeah. Especially when there are three kids, I thought that's, it had a great that's dynamic. That's Spielberg right there. Because Spielberg that's, does oh, families very well. Very well. Even the neglected ones like Close Encounters. Yes. <laughs> or E.T. You know, the fatherless ones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Spielberg. Go see a therapist, man. He's been working his issues out through all his 80s, 90s movies. I know. But if you watch like Jaws, the Brodies are actually a really great yeah. movie family. Yeah. Here the Freelings are a really great movie family. They're a great movie family. Yeah. So we, we open with... Uh, the television set <laughs> turning off for the broadcast day see children back before we were <laughs> before we were a 24 7 society <laughs> mm-hmm. the tv would turn off at two o'clock <laughs> uh did it play the anthem and then turn off yeah usually if it was a broadcast it was like a if it was abc or nbc because um, we didn't have cable at that yeah point. <laughs> it was channel one two or three yeah um they would play the national anthem and then they would we are ending our broadcast day mm-hmm. and um and just go static which yeah. is also something you don't see on TVs much anymore. No, you, you just right get now. no signal. Yeah, um, you can't get. I kind of, I kind of miss. I kind of miss the TV looking at me, and looking at me, and going, "It's time to go to bed." Yeah, right. That the static was the old school version of Netflix's "Are You Still Watching?" Yes. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, the TV ends its broadcast day, and then you get um, E Buzz, the family dog, <laughs> <laughs> who apparently was just watching TV, gets up and starts heading room to room looking for food. As you do. Yeah, <laughs> spill chips like, over here. Yeah, chips. Over there. I don't know what was on Robbie's bed, but he found something there. Mm-hmm. Heather or little Carol Ann did not have anything, but he wakes her up. Yes. And she goes downstairs and starts talking to the TV people through the static. So they are targeting her early. Early. In the film. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I think for the first time, I realized why. Because um, they mentioned later on she was the one child born in that house. Had they really been living there that long? That long. Well, yeah. That's phase one of the Quest of Verde. That's right. Because he's, he's he's showing phase four, which lets yeah. you know that it's it's been a while. And she's five. Yeah. So, but yeah. uh, later on, his boss asks, wasn't one of your children born in your house? And he's like, yeah, Carol Ann. Oh, and also the little subtle bits of business yeah. in there. Yeah. Um, which, which then uh, brings up the question of why are they just now getting all salty about Cause the fucking pool? The pool. The yep. pool. Yeah, because they're digging up the backyard. Yeah. Which, oh God, is California. Don't all of those lamb houses have pools? <laughs> you would think so. But, uh, yeah, she talks to the TV people. Mm-hmm. And uh, family comes out and looks at her. And you've got uh, Mother Diane, yep. Father Stephen, older sister Dana, and brother Robbie. Yeah, you don't get too much Dana in this movie. No, you don't. Um, it's unfortunate. Uh, man, you want to depress yourself, read about... Because Dominique Dune was actually, soon after this movie was filmed, was killed by her boyfriend. Right. Strangled um, to death or something yeah, like that. Yeah, she was right? strangled in her yard. Yeah. Um, and her father, who was Dominic Dune, a very famous writer, mm. wrote a book about the trial because Dude got off with like six years. It was ridiculously yeah. low. Yeah. Um, Slaps on the her, her brother is Griffin Dune. Why that name sound familiar? Uh, American Werewolf in London. Ah, okay. So, um, yeah. yeah, I remember when the Man. dude got out. I remember the news report because he... The dude got out of jail and immediately got another. He was a chef and he immediately got a job in Los Angeles as a chef. Of course he did. And Griffin Dunn would pass out flyers in front of the restaurant, saying the food you're being you're Ooh, eating. Ooh, served by the man who yeah. killed my sister. Yep. So um, yeah, if you want to depress yourself, read Dominic's Dune, Dominic Dunn's book about the trial. It's really something. It's, yeah. But anyway, um, families like watching her talk to the te- television people. <laughs> yeah, that. that. Which as soon as soon as I come around the corner, I see that that TV's going off. Yeah, but they they kind of just figure it's imaginary friends. Some weird ass imaginary yeah. friends. My imaginary friends weren't coming to the damn TV. No, but um, yeah, you get the next day, and uh, Stephen works for the play, the the housing the housing yeah. development. Um, he is their top seller. Yeah. Sold forty percent of the houses in that. That dude puts in some hustles. Yeah, I know. He's like one dude is forty percent. Forty percent. He needs a raise. <laughs> yeah, and they never made him partner, which is no. Fucked up. I know that's totally fucked up. Maybe it's because he couldn't pass a drug test. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'll never, never understand why they won't promote me. <laughs> But um, the following day, because you get this the scene and you see the the tractors coming in to dig their pool, yeah. and um, the the workers sexually harass Dana, <laughs> and then, mom just kind of shrugs it off. Yeah, because Dana flips in the bird. Yeah. And she's just like, Dana's oh, that's my daughter. Own, yeah. The funniest 
there's a lot of comedy to start this movie, which mm-hmm. I feel might have been a little bit Spielberg too. Um, oh yeah, oh yeah. The best one is dude who leans in through the window, <laughs> picks up the pot coffee. of whatever, <laughs> yeah, gets a little you make spaghetti some great off the spoon. coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Ate some crackers yeah, too. He's just eating stuff through the window. I'm like, damn, make yourself at home. I love that guy. Man. I don't know why, but every time I watch this movie, that scene, I always forget about it. It always makes me laugh. Um, so uh, Diane finds Carol Ann's bird dead, Tweety dead. Yeah. She's going to flush it. I'm like, oh, that's not going down the toilet. You do that no. to a goldfish. Yeah, you don't do it to a fucking bird. No. Oh. So, uh, and Carol Ann catches her the catches worst her. possible time. Now, that way, is this supposed to be. Like a harbinger of things to come? I think so. I think so. So but first the spirit's like, we got to take that fucking bird out yeah, first. that bird. It's going to mimic us. Let's just, <laughs> yeah. let's just kill it first. Let's say it out first. Um, so we get a nice little burial scene with a little licorice and flower. Right, and it's right. so cute. And I think it, that that does great to serve just like what a sweet and innocent little girl Carolyn right. is. And then she immediately goes, can I get a goldfish? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. she's still five. Um, and in Eba's the dog immediately starts to dig up the dead bird. It's like it's it's actually terrible it's a cool scene. Terrible it's actually dog. a nice little scene. Yeah. But later that night, the TV and people smash come back. Goldfish. Yeah. Oh, because later that night there's a storm, mm-hmm. and there's this really big icky tree outside of the kids' yeah, bedroom. Man, fuck that tree, man. And Robbie doesn't like the tree. He also doesn't like the clown doll that is. In his awesome bedroom with Star Wars sheets and Star Wars posters. Yeah, that giant Darth Vader poster by yeah, the door. I want that man, poster. I wanted all of the posters and yeah. I wanted the sheets. And I'm like, man, this is a cool bedroom kid. Yeah, he's a, he's a cool kid. Um, I don't understand why he just don't throw that damn clown in the closet and be I'm done with it. I'm assuming somebody's grandmother made that thing. And you can't just throw it out because um, grandma made it for you. Yeah, I think that's a good I point. don't know why you wouldn't just store it in the closet, though. Yeah. Because it's, it's, a, it's, it's creepy a, as shit. It's a creepy, creepy clown doll. Yeah. And he just throws a jacket over it every night. <laughs> Which, a Chewbacca right. jacket. <laughs> oh, is that what it was? I didn't it catch that It was a part. Chewbacca face. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what? We say this is what? 1982? Oh, 1982. Yeah. So we got so, yeah. Star Wars and Empire by that point. An Empire, yeah. So uh, the next night, the storm scares them, and they go into their parents' bed after uh, interrupting mom and dad in there. <laughs> and their mom and dad time. What was going to be mom and dad What was going to be mom and dad time. <laughs> I feel sorry for them, man. They're the real victims in this whole movie. They are. And... uh the TV people come back, and that's when you get the, the incredibly famous line from this movie. Is this that they're here? They're here. Yeah, they're here. Yeah. Um, yeah, my name is Carol, and for years and years and years, people called me Carol Ann. That is not my name. My name is Carol Jean. <laughs> that's what the J is. That's what the J stands for. I've been asking you that for like three months now. Yeah, that's what the J stands for. It's not Carol Ann. But people still call me Carol Ann. Wow. It's because of your... Your embrace with the dark side and the cause. Yeah, I, I usually talk to TV people a lot. I knew it. Um, <laughs> so the next morning after breakfast, the TV people decide to rearrange some furniture. And that is when we <laughs> kick into step by step what you did wrong That's in right, this movie. Right, because this is when I leave the fucking house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, what, what what was this? What happened? No, uh, pack the bags. We're out. Moms do, and it's actually a really cool. It's. It's a well-filmed scene because she comes in and the chairs are all pushed out from the table. And she's like, I told you kids to push all these kids in. And Carol Ann's watching television, a little portable TV in the kitchen. kitchen. And she walks over to the sink and it's a, there's no cut. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Uh, She walks over to the sink, leans down, grabs some cleaning supplies, turn around and the chairs are balanced, like pyramided on top of the table. Doesn't it happen twice? I think it happens twice. Like she comes in and they're out. She pushes them yeah. in. They're she pushes out again. them in. No, because no, because she pushes them in and then goes and then they're on top and of the table. On top. But then Stephen comes home and she has found a a, a, uh, a point. Yeah. A, <laughs> this is where mom is like super fucking crazy. I don't know what's going through. <laughs> and, and before we get to that, uh, there's a great comedic bit in that scene too of uh, where Caroline's looking into the static. Oh, into the static. She's, she's like, way oh, too honey, close to the TV. <laughs> that's going to hurt your eyes. Let me turn on this war movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like guys dying all over it's the place. A great bit of That's going to rot your brain. <laughs> But yeah, she finds this, I don't know, soft spot in the, the house. soft spot in the that? house or something. Because Stephen comes home and she's like, think back to when you had an open mind. Yeah. That's... <laughs> <laughs> they, they threw all the comedy at the very beginning of this movie. And there is a point in the kitchen where if you put something, it'll be drug across the floor. Mm-hmm. And uh, She's she, got it all mapped out. She's got it all mapped out. She's got circles, arrows. Mm-hmm. She pushes, the ch- a chair goes, 
and then she puts her kid there. Right? <laughs> I'm like, dude. In the old football <laughs> helmet or something like the that. A little football helmet on her, and she goes flying across the floor. Mommy, that hurts. Yeah, I know. I need to wax. <laughs> um, <laughs> And at this point, he should have been like, yo, yeah, let's Yeah, right? let's just leave. Let's just leave. Yeah. Um, but she's like, you can you try it, Stephen. Try it. It's like a tickling pulls you. And I'm like. These are all the red flags. Let's just go to a hotel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Figure this out later on. Yeah. And uh, she's, he won't do it. He, he They ask next door to see if anything weird has happened next door. The, uh, the beef between these neighbors. Because <laughs> the, the movie starts with the football game. Right? Yeah, the football yeah. game where the um, they have control. remote control yeah. problems because, well, children, long ago, <laughs> <laughs> if your TV was too next to your neighbor's TV, your remote could actually change their channel. Yeah. Um, and they kept changing the channel from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Mr. Rogers' yeah. Neighborhood. My kid wants to watch Mr. Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> the game's on. Come on, man. Um, so... Uh, the, later that night, another storm comes through because they just leave the kitchen. Well, Stephen goes, nobody's going in the kitchen until I figure out what's going on. I mean, that's that's a half measure. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you still got to figure out what the fuck's going on. Yeah. But later that night, another storm comes in. <clears throat> and this is where the tree attacks. Yeah. Because that tree comes through the window and grabs Robbie. Yeah. Well, so Robbie... Justified this whole time. Just, that tree was just evil, waiting for it. So for now, my storm. question is: Did the whatever spirits just realize that he was afraid of that tree and just use that fear against yeah. him? That's what I'm assuming because they they used not only a tree against and him but later a clown. the clown. Yeah. Um. So, uh, the tree comes in and grabs Robbie, mm-hmm. and while they're outside trying to. Save him save Robbie because he's being tree. he's literally being eaten by a tree. Yeah. It is old man Willow from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> he's just eating that Hobbit. Yeah. Um, uh, that was almost all the way in there. Well, too. they're outside trying to save Robbie. Carol Ann is being pulled into her closet. closet. Yeah, it's a great <laughs> diversion on the spirit's part. It is. Yeah, the spirit general's like, all right, we're gonna flank okay, them from the so left. We just with do this that. Get them all outside. Yeah. We'll pull that little girl through the closet. Ooh, got it. And not just her, but. All of the damn furniture goes into the closet. Yeah, like we're not taking no risks, no chances. Yeah. We're just going to get it all except for the mattresses. Sucking it all in. And yeah. and there's like, it's one of two instances of kind of early 80s special effects with the tornado effect mm-hmm. in this one that kind of looks bad now, but... Ah, I think it still holds up. It's, it's not terrible. It's not horrible, terrible. But that's how they're... It's like Dana's like, it was a tornado. It must have just skimmed us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it made the tree eat Robbie. <laughs> I don't yeah. know why. Mm. <laughs> the tree's from Oz. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so they go inside and they can't find Carol Ann. Mm-hmm. They pull everything out of the, the closet and the only thing that's in there is Creepy Doll. Right. So they go searching around. And another nice beat because Dana goes, I'll go check the kitchen. And Steven's like, no, I'll do, I'll do that. Because yeah. he still doesn't want anyone to go into the kitchen. Right, right, right. right. But then they think, oh, my God, she's in the hole that they dug for the pool. Yes. So they drive in there trying to find her, and it's Robbie, who is just like covered in muck. Covered in, yeah, his whole day's fucked. Yeah, yeah, he's had a bad day. (laughs) Um, Covered in muck from the tree. Here's her in the television set. Yeah, great sound design for that. Um, Here's her just calling for mommy. Yeah. And uh, it's a great scene because she comes in. He's like, Carolyn, Carolyn. Well, you would be too. (laughs) Yeah. And uh, so... Uh, at this point, they decide to bring in the professionals. Who are you going to call? <laughs> not, not the Ghostbusters. We not didn't have money for licensing. <laughs> they call Beatrice Straight. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Aaron. <laughs> um, I Dr. Leia. Dr. Le- what is her name? Um, I can't remember what her name is. In Dr. Moment. Lesh. 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 It was an unusual name. Um, yeah, so... Who were they? Like, where do you find these this, guys? Well, they were at a college, apparently. Yeah, they were at a college, and I'm like, did did one of the two parents go to this college? Yes, did they be, look I in don't the know. Yellow well, I guess, pages. Well, uh, Dinah was saying you look in the yellow pages. A strange phenomenon's not there. Uh, I don't. Know, I guess they just that. did their research or something because they found a paranormal group. Right. And Stevens telling them that you know, w- weird shits happening at my house. Yeah. Um. And here's what God. This was like. I also noticed that you know they were giving the ages of everybody. It's like my oldest daughter, Dana, is sixteen. My my wife is thirty two, and I'm like, whoa, Stephen, <laughs> 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 knocking up a sixteen year old. <laughs> 
past. So that's why I won't make him a partner. Like, no, your past is too <laughs> sordid, my friend. We don't want that heat. <laughs> so he brings in uh, Dr. Lesh and her team of two. Yeah. Uh, uh, Marty. Marty and Black Guy. And Black Guy. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan. Ryan. There we Richard go. Richard Lawson, who is on several star, or several sci-fi shows. He's re- very recognizable. Yeah. Yeah. Marty, I didn't recognize, but Richard Lawson, I recognized. Well, but um, you didn't recognize Marty because his fucking face melted off. No. <laughs> 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 this this movie actually made me want to become a vegetarian. It, it was one of the impetuses for me to become a vegetarian for a very long time, because they go to investigate the house, and it's so funny because you get the scene where where Ryan's like, "I felt strange." I filmed a strange phenomenon on a child's toy when across the, the yes, floor. It was like, seven feet. It's like 10 feet for seven hours. Seven hours. Yeah. And they're like, huh, huh. let's open the door. Open That's a great Everything reveal. Everything in the, in the kids' room is just flying all over the place. Yeah. The clown is riding a lamp. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Hulk is riding a horse. <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's crazy insanity in the room. Yeah. And they're like, oh, we might be in for a little more. So they're like, for. okay, we're going to set up shop here and start filming. Yeah. So uh, they they film that night. And, and that's when is... you get a, uh, first of all, uh, it was, a, it was uh, Marty? Yeah, Marty is the white guy. Yeah, Marty just rummaging through fridges. I, not just rummaging through fridges. He gets out a steak and a pan. I'm like, you're just going to cook yourself a meal. <laughs> you're just going to pan fry this steak up? Yeah. They're just, you know, they're filming the staircase and everything and, and trying to, you know, because they hear Carol Ann through the television shed at right, that point. Right, yeah. um, you get the really nice scene, too, where... Carol Ann's like spirit goes through Diane. Yes. Because yeah. she's like, I see a light, mommy. And Dr. Lesh is like, tell her no, not to go into go the light. Don't light. go into the light. Um, and then she goes like through Diane. She's like, I can't smell her. <laughs> it's actually yeah. really nice. It is. It's it's a, a nice emotional beat. Yes. In, in the midst um, of this insanity. But later that night, Marty decides to go make himself dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Who just takes a steak out the fridge and slaps it on the counter? I don't know, but man, that steak was pissed because it started moving across the counter. <laughs> yeah, that steak was it's not like, happy. I don't want to be eaten by you. <laughs> yeah, put me on a plate, you jerk. And then it like bubbles up, and that's what grossed me out completely was yeah, the, the steak just kind of blow, yeah. blowing up and oh. is gross. And then he's eating a leg of chicken. You just got to clear out the refrigerator. That's right, because he had the steak and the leg of chicken. chicken. Oh, and he spits bastard. out the chicken, and the chicken has all these maggots all over it. And um, and then he goes to wash his face because he's sick. Yeah, and, uh, as you would be. And he looks in the mirror, and then he just... It's the, the overhead light just gets brighter. Brighter and, and brighter, intense. and then he starts to tear all of the skin off of his face. I have questions. Yep. First of all, when I think of Poltergeist, that is the scene I think of. Mm-hmm. If I'm looking into a mirror and I see that my face is like sloughing off of my skeleton head, the f- last thing I'm going to do is it start pulling on at it. it. No, I'm going to like, yeah. where's the tape? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to duct tape my <laughs> face together. Look like Harvey Two Face. Yeah, I'm, no. The last thing is you just pull chunks of my cheeks off of my And he just my pulls skull. like his entire cheeks off and stuff. Yeah. It's kind of, it's really gross. It, you see, it's splapping down. Yeah. In the sink. Um, of course, it's all a vision. Yeah, yeah. These <laughs> but, ghosts are are great at fucking with you. Yeah. yeah, and he goes back out to you know obviously like, tell everybody I just ripped my face off, um, and there are lights coming down the staircase. Right, right. And nobody's you know, Ryan's just in there listening to his tunes, drawing on his. Just like <laughs> uh, you might want to watch your cameras. There are <laughs> yeah. lights coming you down set, the you staircase. He shoots up for a reason, you know. <laughs> um, but uh, that's it. So. They film all of that, and then a hole appears in the living room, and right. a bunch of stuff from the from the bedroom from the bedroom comes down, just, and just like, drops down. It's like watches and necklaces and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. And so the next morning, now we Dr. got our escape route for Carol Yeah. yeah. Doctor Lesh says she's going to go and uh, analyze the stuff that came out of the hole, mm-hmm. and because uh, one of the watches is just a couple years old, and one of the brooches is a hundred years old, so it's, it's like just all over the place. Yeah. Um, she says, Ryan will be back. Marty will not be back. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> Marty's the smartest person in this movie. Yeah, because at this point, I don't know how they're sleeping in this house. No, I wouldn't be eating any of the food out that fridge. No. I'm not doing anything associated with that house. I, I, I would be leaving. Yes. Be, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, I understand uh, my, my daughter's missing, but I'll be in the hotel 10 minutes. That's right. Road. You need me, I'll be here in 10 minutes. <laughs> we'll take shifts going to talk to Carol Ann. There you go. Um, 
But Dr. Lesh does come back, and she brings with her Tangina, the yes. great Zelda Rubenstein. <laughs> <laughs> I love this Who's woman. Who's a medium. Love this woman. <laughs> she she sounds like a televangelist. She does. She yeah. te- sounds like a televangelist. Um, she asks a question. She she like goes upstairs because Stephen is immediately skeptical because she's a little person. Well, I, Zelda I Rubenstein was not quite little. She was kind of in between. Yeah. She, she was very small. Very tall for a little person. Yeah. Person very short for a regular size. Um, and he's very skeptical, and she goes upstairs and asks which one was the children's room, and he's trying to mentally... Yeah, see, let's see she picks up on these brain waves. <laughs> and, um, I am a dress and living. living. <laughs> and he's, like, he's like, I was trying to answer her with her mind. And I'm like, and I heard you. I just preferred to talk. <laughs> uh, which, why are you skeptical? Like, this weird it's shit weird going shit. on You got house. kids' toys flying around in a bat in a bedroom upstairs. Why on earth would you be skeptical of anything Yeah, at, at this, this point? point kid I'm... is in a television set. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking everything on Yeah, on everything face at face val- value. Yeah. But they decide, they find a, uh, an escape route. Mm-hmm. The the inside, or the door in, is Carol Ann's closet. Right. And the door out is the hole in the ceiling. So they make tennis balls and check it and everything works very scientific i yeah. thought and i was like okay yeah, yeah. it's, it's number, gross number when two. it comes out though yeah, it's, i'm not it's sure like, what that stuff is covered like in. covered in meat <laughs> 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 it's really this that seriously this was a film that i was a vegetarian for almost 12 years and this was one of the films where i was just like ew yeah it's kind of gross um then i married a carnivore but the thing <laughs> about it is like he just grabs it. He just grabs it. it. I'm like, put some gloves like, on, man. Ew, you don't know what that is. Yeah. yeah. Oh, ew, there's, it's placenta. Don't worry. Yeah, that's <laughs> yes, placenta. <laughs> and he does. He actually smells, yeah, he smells the, it, yeah. the, the tennis ball. But they throw a rope through. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Diane decides that she's going to go in. Mm-hmm. Oh, first they send the kids away. Yeah. Dana freaks out yeah, completely yeah, yeah. and she's, goes to she's, stay she's at friends. Out. And then she they send Robbie to grandma's with E-Buzz. By E-Buzz. I like, yeah. I like the dog. Um which, Which is probably noted. good. That was the smart. She's like, get the kids out of At least get the kids out of that. Taxi's driving away. Kids half hanging out the window. Like, you're not going to get put a seatbelt <laughs> on? Dog ain't restraining any kind of way. All right. The dog's sitting in front seats. Like, yeah, I'm going to grandma's. <laughs> yeah, but they got like good it. food there. <laughs> <laughs> More chips. So Dan decides that she's going to go into the closet and lead Caroline out. Right. And, uh. Then Zelda goes into televangelist mode once Diane goes in. Because <laughs> Stephen's holding on to the rope up in, near the closet. Whatever you like, do, don't drop that rope. Go into the light, my children. All are welcome. So the All first time you welcome. saw that, when she had told him, don't go into the light. And then you hear this woman telling him, did you think like, wait a minute, is she... Is she, is she... I think she knew at that point that Diane at least had a hold of Carol Ann. And okay. she was trying to get the cre- the the ghosts to go into the light. Yeah. So I don't think there was any badness on her part. She was just trying to speed along the ghosts to their heavenly yeah, reward they're, they're, or whatever. Yeah, their <laughs> place of heavenly reward. We're <laughs> fucking with these guys. Yeah, this is your reward. Your reward. Here you go. <laughs> Paradise is your reward. Steven freaks out and starts pulling the rope back. Yeah, you because said, don't go like, into the light. Into the, which, to be fair, that's, 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 that's true. a fair And fair then this nice big face comes out of the closet and scares the mm-hmm. shit out of Steven. Mm, yep, yep. Drop that rope real quick. <laughs> and then, but then Diane and Carol Ann come out of the ceiling. Yep. And then they they're covered in muck. They're covered in the in the purple goo. Ew. <laughs> and they they take them to the bathtub and wash them off. And it's like, oh, happy family, all are well, all are happy, and, and everyone's fine. It ends right there happily. That's right. This house is clean. Roll credits. <laughs> no, no, because no. <laughs> Tangine is a liar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly, exactly what she was. So they all dip out. They're packing up. And they're, they're packing like, up. They're finally bugging out. And, um, about this house. Yeah. And, uh, Steven's like, let me go back to the office for a few hours. I'll come. If the kids want to knock out, just have them sleep. No. Go to the hotel. To the I'll meet you there. Every bad idea. Look, <laughs> I'm going to go to the office. You go ahead and go to the hotel. hotel. I'll come back and pack up anything else that's left. Right. I'll take care of it. That's right. No. I'll meet you at the hotel. No. No. These kids are back in that damn bedroom. <laughs> that fucking bedroom. Yeah. The clown dolls is back. Clown like, dolls hey. still there. <laughs> it's like, I'm like, I guess they patched up the window or something because <laughs> the tree had come through it. I think that's the scene where your Carol Ann's in the bed with a Luke, with Sky- a Luke Skywalker <laughs> toy hanging out of her mouth. <laughs> poor, There's a lot of. Mark Hamill's feet. 
<laughs> There's a lot of Star Wars in this film. There is. There but is. yeah, she's got Luke Skywalker and her her doll is headless and she's. Just, yeah, I assume that is that happened. I guess that probably happened in all the madness that the uh, head came. No, off the Robbie doll. ripped the head off. They were fighting in bed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and Robbie just ripped the head off. <laughs> Man, Robbie, you, you know, that tree should have ate you, Robbie. You're a dick. So, and of course, things aren't done because. No. Diane goes to take a bath, and who the hell takes a bath in this house? No, no she's, she's got to dye the hair. Yeah. Which I think she should have kept the hair. Yeah, man. I liked her hair because she yeah. got a, a white streak. And she got the rogue going yeah. on there. So she's taking a bath, and the, she's blow drying her hair, and then the, the mouth from hell opens in the closet <laughs> again, and it's literally a mouth from hell. Yeah. It is just hell mouth opens up. Something comes up to grab legs and stuff, and yeah. they're trying to pull the kids into the closet, and she... Freaks out, tries to get in there. The hallway, man. And so where, yeah. where I first worked at in the military, it was down a long hallway, and then you turn the corner, and it was down like a twice as long hallway. Yeah. So every time I go up the steps, I'm like, all right, well, I'm only nine miles from my from my <laughs> desk now. I gotta go down these two long ass hallways. And every time I go to get to the top of the steps, I'm like, it's fucking poltergeist yeah. hallway. Yeah. And she gets thrown down the stairs, and then she gets she goes outside. She's trying to get the neighbors to help her, and she falls into the swimming pool, or the the what would be what the would be yeah. the swimming pool. Also, those neighbors are the worst. Those were na- those neighbors well, are horrible. Yeah, all children, is just listen to them screaming at the top of their lungs, yeah. and you're not gonna be like, yo, yo, okay. Yeah. No, all because of the, the football game? Yeah. yeah. But she falls into the swimming pool, and a bunch of corpses start popping up. <laughs> yeah, and that's where you find out that, uh, that this is yeah, built on old, ancient uh, Indian it was, burial it was, land. It was built on a cemetery Yeah. where they moved the tombstones, but not, but the, not the bodies. Because that would have cost the company money. That would have money. cost money, yeah. yeah. Because uh, the, the owner of the, uh, the realtor mm-hmm. offers Stephen a partnership and says... You know, this he, could be yours. This right could here. be yours, and he's like, "Well, there's a, because there's another graveyard where Phase Six, I suppose, is going to be." And he's like, "Uh, what about these? Oh, we've done it before. We've moved the moved the graveyard." Yeah. And I'm like, "Okay," but yeah, they just moved the tombstones. They didn't move the bodies, which is what I guess is pissing all these people off. That's what I assume. But why would I they s- not be happening the entire neighborhood? Are they right. are they like pissed at Stephen because he works for this company? <laughs> you should know better. <laughs> no, they never told me. Yes, I don't yeah, know. but they had to have done all the digging and the whatnots when they laid the foundation for all yeah, these houses. But but it's that damn swimming pool. It's a damn swimming pool. It goes down. I, I guess they, no nobody has basements. Aquatic yet. recreation. <laughs> nobody has watch. basements in this in this housing development. All right. But uh, yeah, uh, a body start popping up all over. Stephen comes running running back to get the family out and. The house literally collapses, collapses on in on itself. Right. Family gets out with the dog. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yes. So, thankfully. Thankfully. House cla- collapses in on itself. Dude, uh, boss dude is just standing there. The like, huh. <laughs> Family drives away, finally goes to the Holiday Inn. And it's like, who about fucking time about you got your kids? should have been in that Holiday Inn four days ago. And, and they tossed the they TV tossed out. They the TV out. <laughs> that's, that's a nice little comedic beat to put it yeah. there. Yeah. And that is the end of the movie. That movie fucked me up as a kid, man. <laughs> I think I saw it way too early. Oh, we forgot life. the clown attack. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah before the, Hellmouth opens, the clown turns evil and attacks yeah. Robbie and pulls him under the bed. And wraps his arms Wraps around. his arms. That yeah. was the one thing that freaked me out because I don't yeah. like dolls to begin with. And uh, that, that clown doll is exceedingly creepy. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but they, they know how to make a creepy looking. And doll. I loved how um, Robbie gets the better of it and just rips the stuffing out of his. I hate you. Yeah, I hate I, you. I did like that. Like Robbie finally took his full frustrations <laughs> He's out just on that day. <laughs> I was like, finally, this is my chance to say, fuck this clown. This clown's going to know I'm talking to him. And there's a really, it, it's it's really sad when the, the the closet door opens and things start flowing in. And Carol Ann just looks so tired. And she's like, no more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's, I, I just got done with all this. What I want to know is what was the time lapse between this house is clean and all the new fuck. I would assume that it's the just next days, day. The next day. Yes. I would assume. Because it, it the stuff that they're packing up is just stuff that you throw in boxes and get the hell out. There's a yeah. lot of stuff left over. There's still a lot of stuff left. Yeah. I but was they've peeping been living that when there I was for like, They've been living there for at least five years. So it's not like they just moved in. You've got a lived-in house. It's, yeah. It's going to take a little bit. Um, yeah. Um, misnamed movie, because 
this is actually a haunting. It's not technically a poltergeist. Okay. All right. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, they're they're on top of a graveyard. This is the souls of these people getting pissed. I appreciate it from the souls' perspective of like, hey, let's just fuck with them and maybe they'll leave us alone. Yeah. All right. They're still here. Let's just take the kids. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they, they, they did ratchet up a little bit quickly. Like, let's just move some shit around. All right. All right, now we'll try to scare them a little bit. We'll put some maggots in their steak and then their chicken legs. <laughs> and then they're like, we've got to snatch your kid. All right, now we're not fucking around. All right, we want you off our property. <laughs> and Tangina says that they take Carol Ann because she's a, she's a pure spirit. Pure and they, spirit, they yeah. need, they, they're attracted to her because yeah. of that. Because they can't go into the light. Because yeah, all in all, they just want to move on with their yeah. whole transition. Yeah. yeah. So, But in the end, the house is gone. Yeah, done. They're in the, done. the hotel room and the TV set is no more. Don't you think that I don't think this family will ever own a TV set again? No, I haven't seen two or three, but <laughs> you best believe my my kids would be clueless on pop culture. Um they're reading a lot of books in that two house. Two isn't terrible, three I do not recommend at all. Yeah. Um, okay. yeah, uh, two, three is bad. I remember seeing part of two on television. And it was after I mean, one the majority of, this... of the, the cast comes back for, for two. Obviously, Dominic Dune couldn't. Yes. <laughs> for obvious reasons. But um, the rest of the cast actually does come back. All right, then. And it's just uh, they're, they're three, attacking Carolina. Three is again. only Heather O'Rourke. Okay. Huh. And at, at that point, she had she was very sick because she I think she was 13 yeah. when she died. Um, she had a... Bowel and yeah. uh, obstruction. Yeah. And it shows on the screen in three. It's, it's not a... Not a great performance. It's huh? not a great performance, and she does not look good. Uh, so it's kind of like, ooh, I don't want to watch this film. Yeah. Also, why are you acting in this condition? Yeah. Well, yeah. parents. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Look, <laughs> she's on her way out. Let's get the last bit of money we can. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Which brings us to Poltergeist 2015. Yeah. That so, movie. This was a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> So far, the theme of uh, these horror joints we've done is uh, they don't make them like they used to. This is a bad idea. This is a bad I was so hyped when I they was... announced it. I was like, oh, the movie that fucked me up as a kid. You got Sam Rockwell's my man. Yeah. And you, when you can't get Zelda Rubenstein, who do you get? Jared Harris. <laughs> yeah, you get Jared Harris up in there. <laughs> Never a bad idea. This was a bad idea. And I'm not sure what accent he was using there. I, uh, Irish, Scottish, yeah, something. British. Whatever he wanted to do, that whatever day. the whatever came out of his mouth at that moment. But man, that was a cool pork pie hat. It was. He it looks was. good in it. He yeah. looks really good in it. So we have a whole new family. Um, this is this was produced by the Sam Bowens. Raimi. Yeah, I I, I I can see that. And Sir Sam Rockwell, and I like Sam Rockwell, damn it, and I really don't like him in this film. He just seems bored. I think. Did he, he just realize this was terrible? Yeah, I think somewhere in production he realized, this is just I'm just going to get film. my way through this and then go about it. He does look bored in a yeah. good bit of this movie. So uh, we have the Bowen family, Eric and Amy, and their three children, because it does keep the same dynamic. The dynamics are there. Uh, Kendra is the 16-year-old. Griffin is the the, ni- the yeah, nine-year-old boy. boy. And uh, Madison. Madison. Is is the new Carol Ann? Uh, so the uh, Kendra, the very promiscuous. Yes. <laughs> teenage. <laughs> Going so, to the motel. Oh, I've been there. What? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, how old were you when you got pregnant, Mom? <laughs> <laughs> so they move to a new house, mm-hmm. and you find out he's unemployed. Yeah. He's and she's a, a stay-at-home mom writing a book. Mm-hmm. So my first question is, how did they qualify for this new house? Right, <laughs> right. Like, what do they have squirreled away in their account? Because I don't, th- even if they had squirreled away, I don't know if somebody would sell them real estate. Yeah, you have no income coming in. You have in. no income coming in. Yeah. Um, and they, I mean, he goes to buy, because the first night that they're there, they put Griffin up in the attic because it's creepy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> if I was a kid, I'd be like, nope, nope, you're going to do something about this. And he finds a closet full of doll or clown dolls. <laughs> you left that shit there. They're like, fuck it, we leave this for next version. And he just, they just leave him in his room. It's like, yeah, I'm like, let's just throw the creepy clown dolls away. Oh, so much bad decision yeah, making. Yeah, but along movies. with the creepy clown dolls is a squirrel. Also that. Ah, the so, squirrel. The squirrel. Squirrel yeah. comes back in a big bad way at the end. But he goes to buy squirrel traps the next day. Eric does. And all of his, decline, almost decline, all of his credit cards are declined. And I'm like... How did you qualify 
for this house. And his whiny ass kids are like, we can't live in this neighborhood. Oh my God, this house is small. I'm like, oh my God, this house is cute. Shut up. It's, <laughs> it's led me to believe that he probably had a pretty nice job. Yeah, I'm assuming so. I, yeah, at John Deere, which apparently was where he worked. Yeah, it was John Deere, which hey, John Deere makes dope. Yeah, but I'm, I'm still just like... I don't understand how you you got this house. I don't understand, and I'm not sure if it's just something I missed. Like, I don't know, maybe I went and peed or something, but all of his cards were declined, but then he immediately goes and buys a a whole shit shit. ton of stuff. Where did he get the money? Where did he get that money? And the wife asks him. And he doesn't say anything. And he never says. He just blatantly skirts that entire issue. Now, he has one credit card that actually worked for the squirrel, squirrel traps, but I'm like... He's buying hundreds of dollars worth of stuff. Well, you want to bet it's a John Deere card that he never turned back in. Oh, my God. That could be. <laughs> that could be. It. What do you bet it's a he John a Deere card? He ran that bad boy out. Yeah. <laughs> now I kind of want to go back and see. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to have to, to, to check that out. Only I don't want to rent this, this movie again. <laughs> yeah, no, ever. No, never um, again. <laughs> if I ever meet Sam Rockwell, like three ninety nine, Sam, give it up. <laughs> give, give me the four bucks Is back. it for Boulder guys? I understand. So um, mom and dad go to a, a friend's house for, for dinner. And a little networking, too. A little networking, trying to get him a job. Yeah. It's all uncomfortable because they're like, oh, you're in that complex, you know, where they built it on top of the cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me? What? <laughs> no, 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 no the, the, our religion did not tell us this. And while they're there, Kendra, who is babysitting, gets trapped in an oil pit in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was very random. And and a tree attacks Griffin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and pulls him outside. It's like the Whomping Willow of <laughs> Harry Potter. It tosses his ass it around. Isn't like, it isn't like the, the original Poltergeist where it's trying to eat him. It's just like throwing him yeah, around. It's, just, it's, <laughs> it's greatly inconveniencing the kid. Yeah, it's not trying to eat him, though. And while they're doing that, um, Maddie, who has, who has talking to the TV people mm-hmm. previously... Gets gets sucked up, sucked into the wherever. Uh, so these are are hauntings with ethics. They're like, look, we're here for the daughter. We don't want to eat the kid. Yeah, we don't want to you know just, hurt anyone just, else. Yeah, we'll just inconvenience we'll you. Just inconvenience you for a while. And they hear her in the little Kansas TV. City shuffle. Yeah, and it's got it, it. It carries most of the same beats of the first one, or attempts to, I should say. Yeah. Because they go to a parapsychologist mm-hmm. who brings in a team. Yeah, and you get the. Uh, there's nobody worthwhile on that team of. of notes, no, there's. I don't. I, I don't I'm, one of the guys asks Griffin. It's like you know, your dad could make a whole bunch of. Mo- your dad's out of work, right? Oh, that, could make that a whole dude was bunch an of asshole, money. Man. Yeah, yeah. Could make a whole bunch of, of money d- saying that a poltergeist was haunting your house. Their kids disappeared. Yeah, <laughs> come on, come on, guy. come on. Yeah. So insensitive these are, is all. These, hell. these are no Ryan and Marty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, do they yeah. even give the other girl a name? Nope. Not that I remember. I don't remember if they gave her a name. All I know is that guy got a little bit of what was coming to him. Yeah. Yeah, he did because yeah. he gets pulled into the wall yep. trying to put a camera in the closet because the closet, again, is the hot spot. Yeah. That's all I had seen in this movie. Um, but And again, he's, he's drilling into the wall and the hole, the, yeah. it goes through the wall and punches a hole in it. And the drill is, and, and the entire it's, cord is sucked in. And yeah. this dude just reaches his hand dude, in why there. Why would you just wantonly, without any kind of doing? flashlight, no research, <laughs> no nothing? What are you doing? <laughs> I did like that, uh, that this closet would not open at all for yeah. them. Yeah. And, and there's the like, shit goes down. Yeah, there's static electricity attached to the handle because the kids are playing with it and their hair standing up. Yeah. And um, she hears things from the closet. But it's just, it's, first off, these kids are not great actors. No. They're, they're definitely not the original. <laughs> no, the original kids the original held kids, their weight, man. They they acted like kids. This whole entire family to me felt like a Hollywood manufactured family. I just didn't believe any but yeah. it was related. No here. chemistry there. There was no chemistry at all. Right. So Maddie disappears, they call in the parapsychologist. Again, you they can't seem to get her out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they call in Jared Harris. Jared Harris, who was uh, who is a, on it was was you was got like a reality TV show. Yeah, he's a ghost hunter. Yeah, a ghost hunter. Yeah, which um, was uh, great for the older daughter because she watched that show. Yeah, um, he explains that Maddie is psychic and that's why they're attracted to her. Yeah, 
which to me is like, eh, mm. not okay. as good an explanation as the uh, the original. As no, that she was born in the house and that she, yeah, yeah, yeah so. that she's she's got connection to the house. Uh, Doctor Brooke Powell, that's his. Um, Doctor Brooke Powell is the lead parapsychologist. Uh, Kerrigan Burke. Yes, that was just a great her name. Her ex husband. I do yeah. like the name Kerrigan Burke. That's a good name. But it, her ex husband is the is the ghost hunter that yeah. she brings it's in. A, it's a, and they have a nice little one little good scene where there's a little back and forth witty banter. Yeah. That he has some fun with. There. Yeah. Yeah. And you know he shows off his scars. And yeah. <laughs> all his war wounds over the all years. All his war wounds from ghosts. <laughs> and and they they do the whole. Uh, rope through the closet and out the hole in the ceiling again. Yeah. Uh, only this time it's Griffin because they try. First off, first off, this was filmed for 3D because there's a lot of instances oh, where things are reaching toward yeah. the screen because it's supposed to be 3D. Um, oh. Griffin flies a drone in there and sees hands all over the place and yeah. it's all icky and yucky. Yeah. And um, then the drone is knocked down. So. Uh, while they're arguing about who's going to go into the closet, Griffin runs in there. So my question with watching this is, I find it interesting that radio signals can still get to the drone <laughs> from the remote control. <laughs> and they're all wearing uh, GPS signals. And when Griffin goes into the closet, the GPS signal is still coming through. So I'm like, right. so the afterlife... Still just, carries radio signals. Yeah, toss him a TV in there. Give him some Netflix. Yeah, like, just, down. They're, they're, here we go. We'll, we'll buy you cable. Can you please shut up and leave us alone? <laughs> yeah, hey, <laughs> knock three times and you need something. Here. We got you. But um, it's eventually, like the Babadook. We'll, yeah. we'll live with you. Griffin finds Maddie and mm-hmm. pulls her out, and we get the whole bathtub scene with them covered in gook. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, they're not even covered in gook all that much here. They're just kind of nowhere like the first one. They're the just kind of slimy. Yeah. So um. Like there was like a substance to the gook, yeah. In the original, the other one just looked like it's, it's yeah. It was seriously looked like they were covered in some sort of meat. It just, yeah. just looked gross. Pureed meat. Yeah. Um. But they get through. They get them through the portal, and this family, to their credit, immediately tries to leave. Oh yeah, yeah. They're they're, <laughs> they're out. Like, we're gone. <laughs> yeah. Fuck only it. we'll come back for everything else. Only the ghosts say no. No. <laughs> and yeah, grabs right. the car and pulls it back into the house. Flips that's it a, over. That's a good little scene. And right and pulls it back into the house. And then Maddie is drugged back up the stairs. One thing I like um, about this over the original is the fact that the, all that happens while. The, the team is still there. Yeah. Because, like, in the original, like, everybody's Everybody had, because the, the house, because Tantrum didn't lie to them. Mm, mm. <laughs> and, he, and here, I was like, no, Jerry Harris, you can't do that to him. Um, but they save her from being sucked into the portal, and Kerrigan decides that he's going to walk in there and tell him how to get into the light. Because it's what he's born to do. Yeah. <laughs> good, good whatever accent, whatever accent, accent he's yeah. trying to do there. <laughs> um, so he takes his little hat and walks to the other side. <laughs> <laughs> and, and meanwhile the house is collapsing in on itself mm-hmm. the family gets away yep. this is what i love about this too because the family comes running out they've saved maddie kerrigan's walked into the closet mm-hmm. and they're like we need a car and the doctor's like take mine and then stands there's like are you not leaving with it? <laughs> <laughs> I did something today. <laughs> and then the house is exploding. Yeah. And they're just standing there near this exploding house while the family drives away. It's like, you could have gotten into the car with them. <laughs> <laughs> I did something today. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> that was my car. <laughs> and yet another instance where wild shit's going on, no neighbors. No. Nothing. Nothing. Although while they drive away, some cops and a fire engine... So I guess up. somebody was like, oh, I better call 911, I guess. Yeah. But the uh, the paranormal team is trying to track Kerrigan because he's still wearing his GPS, but they can't find him. Right, right. But uh, later on, we're shown that the Bowens are looking for a new home. Mm-hmm. Apparently, he got a job got at the high job. school because yeah. he's wearing the high school jacket. He's the baseball coach. He's the baseball coach. Well, he used to play baseball, apparently, so that makes a little bit of sense. Yeah, they set that up um, at the dinner party. They, they go to look at a new house, and Griffin looks at the tree in the yard, shakes his head, and they immediately go, okay, we're out. That's a great, great, yeah. well-set-up scene right yeah. there. Yeah, so, and while, um, and they just drive away looking for another new house, I like probably the, uh, one without a tree. She turns around, there's just nobody else in the house, there's and no- then <laughs> smash them in the car like, <laughs> yeah, we're out. Oh, remember that time we almost died? And then you get a mid-credit scene where they do find Kerrigan Burke. 
He, yeah. he apparently made it out from the other side, and, and he's he starting a new show with his with ex-wife. This, yeah. So. Good for them. In his cool little hat. Oh, okay, you can't, you can't not have that. So, yeah, your your clown scene comes pretty early in this film with the clown attacking Griffin, and it's right, not nearly right. as no, creepy. No, no, no. no. Yeah. Well, what's creepy is that squirrel that they caught. It was like all gnawing on the bars and shit like that. <laughs> the I was squirrel like, was Ooh. rabid, man. <laughs> yeah, that squirrel was zero to 60 Are y'all, they're ghosts in here? <laughs> <laughs> y'all are haunted. I'm with y'all. Um, so, uh, the, again, the original all the way. Original, is, yes. Um, this wasn't even a valiant attempt. I it's no. kind of it's kind of sad because I think you could have done a new poltergeist and made it work. Oh, you totally can make it work. Like the visual, like 2015, so the yeah. visuals are there now. The, so yeah. you can do some cool shit. But with even that. the visuals in this one are just kind of they're all focused on that 3D. They're shit. very generic. Yeah. Um, and a lot of you know the rope hanging out, trying to look 3D ish, and the hands coming out, yeah. and I was just like. Oh, this is kind of tedious. Yeah. And you, when Sam Rockwell and Jared Harris can't save your movie, that's when you know you got some problems. You got some big problems. And you're right. Jared Harris does look, or not Jared, Sam Rockwell does look. Just look bored. He's just like, let me step here, say my mark, emote a little bit, let me step here. And he's my supposed mark. to be all mad because he's out of work. But again, I'm like, well, why are you moving if you're out of work? I can understand if they like foreclose on your house, but if they foreclose on your house, how are you getting another one? How are you getting one? another one? Yeah. They, they, they didn't. Uh, some something you would There's, fall yeah, away it's just here. it's some pretty poor writing in this one. Yeah, agreed. Um, agreed. Whereas the original, I think is pretty, pretty solid. Pretty solid. Pretty damn and solid. And it's actually yeah. a really good movie. It's great family dynamics. <laughs> yeah. You got some good legit creepy shit in there. Yeah. You got the, uh, I guess Poltergeist version of Jason's dead, but he comes back for that one last scare. One you got a whole yeah. like, another ten minutes. Yet. Yeah, we're not done. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I think it's. I think the original is as much as that fucked me up, and I refused for years to watch it. <laughs> I own it. I think I've only seen it like three times. Yeah, yeah. the The Exorcist for me was. Uh, I think I saw it when when it come out seventy two, seventy three. So I would have been six, six or seven. Yeah, <laughs> I think it was much like Texas Chainsaw. I saw it in that very tender young age, <laughs> <laughs> where. <laughs> It took me years and years and years to actually watch it through again. Yeah, yeah. Um, this one, not so much. I actually remember enjoying this very much seeing it in the theater for the first time. Awesome. Because I went with a group of friends. And it's always, when you watch scary movies, it's almost better when you see them with a group of yeah, people. Yeah, that's. I think that is, horror and comedies are the two yeah. best communal experiences. And yeah. MCU movies. Best communal experiences. Um, uh so yeah, TBS. The, that's where I saw it for the first time. It was ah, on TBS. And yeah, I was it was like, actually regular rotation on TBS for a long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know I, why I was watching that shit in the first place. I don't recommend either of the sequels. And the whole curse of Poltergeist thing is, yes, two of the three children did die at young ages. Yeah. Um, but everyone else that they say is like, oh, uh, Toby, Toby Hooper died. Well, you know, yeah, he died later on of a heart attack. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Will Sampson died, but he was 90. <laughs> Eventually it's, that will happen. That will happen to everybody yeah. who is associated with this film. Oh, it's the curse so, of the Boulder guys. No, it's <laughs> called time. It's, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, the only two cursed people you could talk about are Heather O'Rourke and Dominic Dunn. But even that, I don't, you know. Yeah, you can't, it's kind of hard to curse when one guy's just an asshole. Yeah. The other one's medical issues. Yeah. Um, so. No, we're all cursed with being left with Craig T. Nelson, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> That's where the real curse comes in. <laughs> He's still going. He's still He's going. He's still, still, still coaching it up. He, he was on welfare and food stamps, and nobody helped him. <laughs> Actual quote. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, um, yeah. yeah, you did get help at that point, then, if you were on welfare and food yeah. stamps. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Do you know what help How, is? Do you know what that is? You know what that is? <laughs> Jesus. But um, yeah, but yeah, this I, original all the way. The original all the way. I I love the. I even love the effects. Some of them, the whole face ripping scene is kind of goofy, but it's so disgusting. Yeah, it is. Just, just, the just and the way his head is sink. just shaking. Yeah. And, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh no, no, no. I still want to know how they did that steak sliding across the counter. I, that's would, very I don't well know. Done. That's very well done. And then it, it when it bubbles up, there's like a lot of meat coming out of it. Yeah, this is a this is a tender, a good juicy ass yeah, steak. And it's, I don't know how they did that either, but I, mean, I can see, as much as I see Spielberg in this film, I also see Toby Hooper in this film. Right. Because a lot of the scares are genuinely scary. Right. There's a lot of humor, but the scary bits are actually pretty fucking frightening. It's like most like dramedies. They get all, they, they front load all your comedy mm-hmm. at the beginning like the first act, and then when things get serious, that's when they take that serious turn, and it's serious from there. So I see a lot of 
uh, Spielberg fingerprints in that first act. Yeah. And then when shit gets serious, right about when the investigative team comes in, I think that's when I'm like, all right, now we're dealing with some Toby Hooper shit. Yeah. So, and then I wouldn't, I would not be surprised if it was Spielberg's idea to toss the TV out at the very end. Yeah, I, I probably, he probably did that. Yeah. So, so yeah, his, I mean, and I even like the score by Jerry Goldsmith from the original because it's kind of creepy, lullaby ish. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I fucked with some Jerry Goldsmith, man. <laughs> he has some ki- creepy kids singing in the background. Whenever you have kids singing on a soundtrack, it's creepy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just mm-hmm. creepy. It's mm-hmm. bad. I don't care if it's Annie. <laughs> it's it's going <laughs> to be creepy. Consider yourself at home. No, you're creepy. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we got? Uh, so this was this is a, a general release for yes. for all peoples. Uh, next week we're back to another Patreon. Patreon, release. and doing, what are we doing we're next doing week? Dawn of the Dead. Dawn of the Dead. Yeah, um, going to zombies. Yeah, my favorite of the Romero. Uh, we go from serial joints. killers to ghosts to zombies. Yeah, so we're we're hitting the whole gamut, man. That's right. That's right. Uh, yeah, that's about it, man. Yeah. Uh, you got anything left for uh, the no, Poultry Guys? No, just watch Poultry Guys. It's go a watch fun Poltergeist. movie. It's, it's a, October. It's, it's, it's a good movie. Yeah, yeah. you should Halloween. be watching it anyways. Yeah. Bye. Bye. All right, take it easy.